how we in the Western world get married has changed, and it's still changing, certainly here in the UK, in Scotland. I might consider myself somewhat of an expert, as I've been married just five times. <laughs> Actually, that statement isn't strictly true. I've been married legally twice to two different husbands, and my second and current husband and I had four very different ceremonies, but just one contained a legal element, which is why I like to say I had five ceremonies. This is my beloved Will, my second husband. He's Australian. My first husband was African, and I like to tease Will that I'm working my way through the alphabet. <laughs> Not so long ago, it was the norm for religious bodies and governments to standardize when, where, and how we could marry. Also to say who could perform a ceremony of marriage and who could marry who. And depending on who you love and where you are in the world today, this can still be true. Whilst interracial and single-sex marriages are accepted and celebrated in many countries, they're still considered stigmatic and or illegal in some parts of the world. But I acknowledge that huge progress has been made and there have been changes in mindsets and laws. And it's very clear to see that cultures and ethnicities have blended, new ideas have become accepted and mainstream wedding ideas have evolved. So formerly non-traditional elements such as personal vows, ritual and symbolic gesture beyond just an exchange of rings, and natural outdoor locations like the beach have become much more usual choices. <laughs> What's great in this day and age is that couples can choose to be alternative or traditional or somewhere in between. Now, during my 20s, I lived in London and there I met my first husband. Back then, I considered myself Church of England or Anglican, and he considered himself Muslim, inasmuch as those were the boxes we would tick if we were filling in a form. Our birth religions didn't feature in our everyday lives, and yet they still influenced our thinking as we wondered how and where we would get married. And to begin with, how and where was a bit of a dilemma. He didn't feel comfortable getting married in church, and I didn't feel comfortable getting married in the mosque. But we were in love, and we didn't give too much time or attention to thinking about the wording or content of our ceremony. We just wanted to be married. So we wed with just 20 guests in a country hotel which had just become a registered premises for civil ceremonies. And it seems bizarre to me now to think that back then, in England, in the 90s, a short, civil, non-religious ceremony held by a registrar was considered the best option for two people such as ourselves who regarded ourselves as different religions. These days, there would be more options. So we married with the blessings of both of our families and with the best of intentions. And as far as we knew then, for life. So it was very painful along the way to face the fact that life called us in opposing directions. And after a few years, we separated and then amicably divorced. I ended up in Scotland. I met Will very quickly. We became firm friends before romance blossomed, but once it did, within weeks, we knew marriage was on the cards. However, it would take us nearly 12 years to figure out what we were going to do. In between getting married for the first and second times, I had a rather extreme change of career. I went from being a PA, a personal assistant, to becoming an interfaith minister. 
And following the two-year training, almost by accident, I began working in the Scottish wedding industry as a celebrant. So when it came to getting married second time round, I was very well informed as to what my many and varied options were. So many couples still have no idea of what choices they have. But I knew I had flexibility and freedom with the wording and content. And I knew that a personal and creative ceremony with depth and meaning was possible. And this time, it was so important to me and to Will. And I knew for a fact what real Scotsmen do or don't wear beneath their kilts. I cannot tell you how many gentlemen sit in the front row at a wedding ceremony and they forget what they're wearing. Now, this photograph confirms the fact. <laughs> But it's more audience appropriate for today than the usual full frontal view that I have to endure. So, Will was very inspired to wear a kilt for our ceremony. And we were very inspired to have our wedding our way, having seen lots of couples get married their way such as this couple, who married just the two of them on a lock side, wearing jeans and walking boots. To this couple, who invited their friends river fishing. Right up until the start of the surprise ceremony, the friends thought that we were there taking photographs for Trout Fisherman magazine. <laughs> This couple invited 170 guests to a marquee in an orchard, and the four bridesmaids enthusiastically led guests singing and headbanging to Bohemian Rhapsody, and the bride played air guitar. <laughs> Authentic expression and absolute choice had well and truly arrived. So as Will and I continue to reflect on how and where we ourselves would marry, we realized we would potentially be bringing together very orthodox churchgoers with quite esoteric free thinkers, with humanists, with people who would regard that they have no faith or belief. And we knew that we could have a ceremony which would be welcoming, inclusive and respectful of these differences, just as it would honor our spirituality, which is somewhat difficult to define and label. But where would the event be? Would it be in my hometown in Yorkshire, England? In the village where we live in Scotland? Or in Will's home city of Perth, Western Australia? If we gathered everyone together in one place, all possibilities involve travel for many guests. And we just didn't see how we could make it convenient and cost-free for some and not everyone. It just didn't seem fair. And we didn't have unlimited funds <laughs> to pay for everyone's travel and accommodation. The idea of eloping seemed very attractive. But when we lightly slipped this into a conversation one day, that we would just sneak off and get married, just the two of us, our friends left us in no doubt as to their thoughts. Don't you dare, they said. So we didn't dare, far be it from us, to disappoint people. But we also recognized we had a calling to share our love and our hospitality with others. We're very sociable creatures, and sharing food with others is a big part of our lives. So it was very us to want to have a big feast and reception as well as something just for us. So we were torn by these two extremes and we couldn't see past having one ceremony and celebration to accomplish everything we wanted. And that just felt impossible. The crucial shift in our thinking came when someone wondered, why didn't we? go to all of the different groups of family and friends and have several gatherings, but with one lot of travel just for us. Well, of course, that could still be very expensive, especially if we went down the route of having all of the usual inclusions, 
flowers and favors and cakes and cars and so on. But the more we thought about it, the more the idea appealed to us. And we didn't have to include all of those extras. So we decided to have a special ceremony and celebration meal in each place. And we decided to make the most of Scotland's very progressive wedding laws, and we almost eloped for the first ceremony. We rented a beautiful house for a week with four of our closest friends who very conveniently also happened to be interfaith ministers. Here we are. So we invited one of them to hold the legal aspect, two of them to be our legal witnesses, and all of them to create our wedding day as a surprise for us, with the stipulation that we didn't want our wedding to be a busman's holiday, as the saying goes. So we didn't want them to include anything that we might regularly include in other people's ceremonies. So no ritual like candle lighting or sand pouring, no poems or readings on love or marriage. We wanted a unique experience. We invited them to be fun and creative and personal. We trusted them and they did not disappoint us. In fact, they surpassed our expectations. Our wedding day began with a Buddhist meditation on peace. Very fitting as our wedding day was September the 21st, International Day of Peace. We continued with a shamanic journey. This was followed by massage. We then had a nature walk and picnic. And this was all before the very relaxed and emotional ceremony took place, which included poems and reflections our friends had written. And one of our friends had written, composed and recorded a song just for us. The four of them sang it to us and we were all in tears. And there were tears at our second ceremony, which was the other extreme in size, with over 300 guests here in this very hall. We opened it to anyone to come from the village where we live, as we didn't want anyone to feel hurt and excluded. We wanted everyone to have a memorable experience, not just us. So this time we opened the ceremony by inviting all of the young children we know well to place precious objects on the central altar by candlelight to honour nature and the four elements, air, fire, water and earth. It was very sweet. Another special moment was when 10 couples of our dearest friends created a sound bath around us. The women stood behind me and the men stood behind Will. And we were surrounded by a gentle, soothing sounding, which created a very profound sacred space, leading into silence during which we exchanged our second set of vows. Now, we didn't really expect Will's family to make the journey from Australia to Scotland. And so we didn't invite any of my family from England either to make it fair. And this very much paved the way for our third and fourth ceremonies. Number three was a traditional but very personal church blessing in Yorkshire, England with hymns and a memorial candle lighting to remember my dad. Our fourth and final ceremony was in Perth, Western Australia, in our niece's garden next to the pool. And this time it was held by another dear friend, and this time our ceremony included lots of the usual ritual and readings so that we could give our family in Australia a taste of what it is we do for people here in Scotland. Now we think that we hold the record for the number of ceremonies marrying the same person, certainly of people we know personally. And we've had a lot of mileage out of the joke for weddings and no funeral. And in the end, we still spent way less than the average one wedding costs here in the UK. According to figures from last year, this averages around 25,000 pounds. In case you were wondering, I wore the same dress four times. 
Will wore the same kilt four times. And I know what he wore beneath it, but I'm not telling. Having absolute carte blanche is fantastic. But maybe for some couples it could be a little overwhelming. Where then do you start if you have so much choice and maybe too little time to think and prepare? Well, some of the latest trends have been inspired by big screen drama, such as Braveheart, Game of Thrones and Outlander. And there's many different ways to include the ancient ritual of hand tying. Or maybe before you take your first steps as Mr. and Mrs. or Mr. and Mr. or Mrs. and Mrs., you'd like to symbolically step into your future with the Celtic tradition of jumping the besom or broom. When we acquired this sword, it wasn't for me to threaten Will with. He's pretty well behaved most of the time. Although, Will, you said four wedding ceremonies would mean four honeymoons, and we've only had one so far. <laughs> In days of old, my dad would very likely have regarded me as a possession in his care and under his protection. And on the occasion of my marriage, he may well have considered he was placing me under the care and protection of my new husband. And so he might have presented Will with a sword to enable Will to protect me. I might have been gifted a brooch or shawl in my new clan tartan. These sorts of unusual rituals are great fun, but clearly they need to have an adapted context. As we, like most modern couples, consider our marriage to be a marriage of equals, no possessing going on here. I feel incredibly fortunate to live and work in Scotland, which is so embracing of young and old, gay and straight, so welcoming of people of all nationalities and faiths. Scotland became so strongly associated with marriage as in recent centuries, the age you could legally marry without parental consent was and still is 16 here in Scotland, whereas it's 18 in England and other countries. So from around the 1700s, young couples would nip over the border to Gretna Green, the first village on the old coaching route from London. And there they could be married by the blacksmith. As back then, Scotland allowed for irregular marriages, meaning that in the presence of two witnesses, you could be married by almost anyone. Now, this is not the case anymore. Only officiants authorised by the Registrar General of Scotland can perform legally recognised ceremonies. But once we are of age, we have choice. We can choose to choose. We can redefine marriage and what it means to us. We can take risks. And I don't just mean with outdoor ceremonies and the Scottish weather, but with uplifting and inspiring ideas. And we can express our maverick and passionate hearts and live our dreams on our big day or days. And we can spread our love and our joy in this often crazy and unsettled feeling world. Now, I never dreamt that I'd have the variety of wedding ceremonies that I had. And having had four wedding ceremonies, I have four wedding anniversaries each year. <laughs> this is a lot of dates to remember. But the plus side is that even though Will and I were married well into middle age, we'll still get to celebrate our 25th wedding anniversary in just seven years after we were married in 2019. <laughs> now, multiple ceremonies and celebrations may or may not be the way for you or your family and friends to go. But please just know that these days, pretty much anything goes in your one or your 10 ceremonies. You're limited only by your imagination, and maybe your bank balance. Thank you.